Welcome back one and all to another Space News Summary with me. On this weekly show we cover all things Starship updates as well as news on everything we saw happen last week and get ready to be excited for all the launches taking place over the next seven days. I've actually got quite a bit of ground to cover this week so let's not waste any more time beginning with the first segment of the video which as always is Starship updates. <laughs> The question on everyone's minds with Starship right now is, when will this happen? But like, in real life, you know? <laughs> and the answer is, unfortunately, that nobody knows. Not even SpaceX. What we can absolutely confirm though is that it won't be until late November at the very earliest and that would be an astronomically optimistic timeline. Realistically, I'd say the first quarter of 2022 will be when we finally get to see the first orbital test flight of the full Starship vehicle. Right now, nothing at all can happen until the 1st of November, which is when the comment period for the FAA's draft environmental assessment document for the flight comes to an end. From there, SpaceX will need to work with the FAA to address any concerns and implement any necessary revisions. This process will take an unknown amount of time. There's a chance it could only take a week or so, but knowing the speed of governmental agencies, I'd say this process would take at least a month, if not longer. From there, assuming all goes through and the FAA is happy, SpaceX will then need to apply for the launch license itself for the flight, which hopefully shouldn't take too long, but again, it's not known exactly how long approval will take. Whew, this launching rockets business turns out to involve quite a bit of paperwork. SpaceX have already stirred trouble with the FAA after launching Starship SN8 in violation of their launch license, with SpaceX stating that the FAA's software was a source of frustration that has been shown to be inaccurate at times or overly conservative, according to their justifications of the SN8 flight. SN8 was, of course, only a suborbital hop, so I imagine that things will be much stricter when it comes to the launch of Booster 4 and Ship 20. Hopefully the FAA will make things as smooth as possible not only for SpaceX, but also for all of the fans eagerly watching the rocket take shape and get ready for that historical orbital flight. For the flight itself, there are, of course, two timelines to watch for the Starship orbital launch. The first is the aforementioned boring red tape set of steps that in retrospect made for a terrible opening of this video, F in chat please for my viewer retention stats. The second set of steps for launching the orbital rocket is, well, the orbital rocket itself. There are three major components to this, Stage 2, which is Ship 20, Stage 1, which is Booster 4, and Stage 0, which is all the infrastructure associated with the support of the launch. Beginning with Stage 2, Starship Ship 20 successfully passed its two cryoproofing tests on the 28th and 29th of September, and now the next step is to complete a static fire. This will hopefully be this week, or it may have already happened by the time this video goes live. I guess now is a good time to mention that I'm taking part in Tour de Mort, a mountain bike race for charity, on Sunday the 10th, which is normally the day I edit these videos. So consider this video one day behind when it comes to news, which is frustrating. When you think about it, literally any other aspect of space news would be fine, but SpaceX work at such a remarkably fast pace that 24 hours of delay can make a huge difference. But I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> when it comes to the static fire, it's unclear if this will involve the sea level raptors and the vacuum raptors, and if multiple static fires will take place with the engines being fed from both the main and header tanks, but I'm sure that as the week progresses, we'll learn more and more in information. Moving along to stage one, Booster 4 remains off the launch pad in order to make room for SpaceX to install Mechazilla, the gigantic catching arms that will eventually be used to catch the booster and ship when coming in for landing. I can't wait to see these massive chopsticks be attached to the tower, and I know I've said this exact sentence for the past two weeks now, but I really do think it will definitely be this week uh, they get attached. Hopefully. I no longer want to say anything in case I jinx it, but big thanks to SpaceX 3D Creation Eccentric for the render of what it currently looks like. It's definitely hard to make it out from the ground level views amongst the spaghetti of other metal structures and piping. Uh, while talking about stage one there, I guess I started going off on one about the next topic, progress this week on stage zero. Guess I've just talked about Mechazilla, but that's not the only development for stage zero that we saw these past few days. GSE tank number eight was finally rolled down to the orbital tank farm to join the others and completing the tank farm's numbers as GSE-8 was the final tank that needed to be added. 
It will, of course, still need to have its cryo shell installed to insulate it from the blistering Texas heat, but it's great to see that we're now onto the final stretch. We'll quickly wrap up the Starship updates with a look at Brendan Lewis's latest excellent infographic and marvel at the fact that both Ship 21 and Booster 5 are very close to completion. Wow, if SpaceX can get things hurried through with the FAA, then, then not only will Flight 420 likely beat SLS to space, but Flight 521 may well beat the Orange Money Pit as well. What do you think? I'd love to hear in the comments down below. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe to help support what I do here. Me personally, I think I'd safely bet on Flight 420 beating Artemis 1, but I think the odds of Flight 521 also beating out NASA are a little bit less likely. But, you know, SLS is five years behind its expected launch date, so anything is possible. Here's hoping we don't get a half-decade delay for Flight 420, though. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at what other great news we saw happen in the world of spaceflight last week. <laughs> The biggest launch event of last week was undoubtedly the successful launch of a Soyuz 2.1A, which carried film crew members Yulia Peresild and Klim Shapenko, as well as Commander and Cosmonaut Anton Shklaplerov. Their Soyuz spacecraft is headed for the International Space Station, where the film crew will spend 12 days aboard to film about 40 minutes of footage for an upcoming film, entitled in English as The Challenge, which is about a cosmonaut who falls unconscious during a spaceflight, requiring heart surgery in zero gravity in order to survive. The film will be released next year and I'm certainly very interested to see how it'll all turn out. The spacecraft successfully docked with the space station and all crew are now on board so so far so good. We had hoped to see the first ever eco rocket launch last week but unfortunately that launch has been put on hold for a bit now. Arcaspace posted on Instagram that the Romanian Civil Aviation Authority would not release approval for the eco rockets launch window. Their statement ended with a note that they will continue to work diligently with other government agencies to understand the reasons that led to this supposedly unprecedented and unfortunate incident and resume launch activities as soon as possible. Best of luck to Arcaspace for getting things squared out sooner rather than later. Speaking of developmental rocket launches, we have an update for Rocket Lab landing very soon. A tweet from Jeff Faust stated that during a launch panel, Rocket Lab's Lars Hoffman mentioned that an update on Neutron is coming very soon, with the vehicle allegedly now being nearly 100% reusable. Neutron is, of course, Rocket Lab's answer to Falcon 9. It started out being similar in size and capacity to an Antares rocket, but has since become a little bit bigger. Until now, the plan was always first stage recovery only, much like Falcon 9 and indeed Electron, eventually. However, presumably SpaceX's progress with Starship has made them rethink their strategy, much like how we've seen with Blue Origin's Jarvis and Relativity Space's Terran R. The future is looking increasingly exciting for rocket launches, it would seem. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of other launches to look forward to in the meantime, including lots of exciting ones this week, so let's take a look at those now. The first launch of the week will be a Soyuz 2.1b, carrying the next 36 OneWeb satellites to low Earth orbit. With Starlink launches back up and running again, I'm sure that OneWeb are keen to continue growing their competing network as efficiently and quickly as possible. OneWeb is currently the second largest satellite network in orbit, and if this launch goes as planned, then the total number of operational satellites will be 352. The next launch of the week will be on the 15th of October, and this will be a crewed mission aboard a Long March 2F. Three Taikonauts will fly to the Tiangong Space Station on mission Shenzhou 13, the second crewed flight to the station. The crew hasn't been publicly announced yet, well, at least at the time I write this on the 9th of October, but whoever they are, they'll be spending six months aboard the station, which is planned to become the standard duration for a crewed stay aboard the Tiangong. The third and final orbital launch this week will be on the 16th of October, and this is a big one. This is NASA's Lucy mission, which will launch aboard a trusty Atlas V, headed not to low Earth orbit, but all the way to the Jupiter Trojans. These are a group of asteroids that share the planet Jupiter's orbit around the Sun. The Lucy mission will span some 12 years, during which the spacecraft will visit eight different asteroids, one in the main asteroid belt and seven Jupiter Trojans. I'm really looking forward to talking with you more about this mission once it's launched, so provided there are no delays, I'll have plenty of juicy info to share with you in next week's episode of Space This Week, so do make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out. <laughs> in addition to the aforementioned orbital launches, we do have a sub-orbital launch happening this week as well. This will be the second ever crewed flight for Blue Origin's new ship 
Shepard, Flight NS-18. The most notable passenger here is William Shatner, aka Captain Kirk from the original Star Trek TV show, who at the ripe old age of 90 years will become the oldest person ever to fly to space. Interestingly, the current record holder is Wally Funk, who flew on the one other New Shepard mission at the age of 82. Other crew members are Audrey Powers, Chris Boschwiesen, and Glenn DeVries. Audrey Powers currently works for Blue Origin and oversees all New Shepard flight operations, vehicle maintenance, and launch, landing, and ground support infrastructure, and she played a lead role in the multi-year process to certify New Shepard for human flight. Whether or not her addition to the crew roster is in response to an open letter from Blue Origin engineers regarding the poor safety standards of the rocket and terrible conditions of the people working on it will likely never be known, but it is a possibility. But regardless, I do hope NS-18 and indeed all the previous missions I mentioned goes well without a hitch. But that's a wrap on all the stuff that's happening this week that I wanted to talk about, which means that the video is now coming to an end. Thank you everyone who made it this far and thank you as well for anyone that liked the video. Again, huge support. And if you want to support my channel even further, then you can always join the channel by clicking the join button below the video. You get a cool little badge next to your name and you get some custom emojis to spam at your pleasure in the comments. You could even also sign up to my Patreon via the link in the description or via the link that's on screen and you'll join the list of names scrolling on the left. Thank you everyone that has done so so far. And I guess, you know, that's 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 everything. You can also watch one of the videos that's currently on screen. I can click that little circle that lets you subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with space news. You know, I make these videos every Monday. Um, so you'll... Oh, I'm out of time.